Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I'm Ellie Snake Lady and today I'm going to be talking about baby corn snakes. I have Athene here with me at the moment. She's just come out of blue so she's due to shed her skin soon. But um, yeah, so today I'm going to be talking about baby corn snakes and my experiences um, with having baby corn snakes, how I've um, looked after them, what I've used to help look after them and things like that. So uh, yeah, so without any further ado, I shall just get straight on with that. And thanks very much for watching. I'm going to show you a bit now of my snakes when they were babies. And um, I've got a few little videos in with some pictures and stuff so you can see what they look like when they were small. So I do love baby corn snake pictures and I love looking back at these guys when they were babies too. So yeah, so I'll just get on with that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is the sort of housing that you should have for a baby corn snake. So the first thing is to make sure that you've got a tank um, or a terrarium. If you have like a plastic terrarium, um, which has a clip lid, I'll put a picture up of one now. Basically, you want to make sure that any enclosure you get, that there's no little gaps or holes that they can sort of slither through and um, because they are great escape artists, as some of us know. And uh, yeah, so you want to make sure that that's secure because you don't want your little snake escaping because they are a nightmare to find once they've gone missing because they can just fit through any little holes. Anything that's the size of their head, basically, they can wriggle through temperature and humidity so when you're setting up um, a tank for your new little corn snake baby it's good to have a warm side and a cool side this temperature gradient between the warm and the cool side of the tank um, it basically allows the snake to choose whether it wants to up its temperature by being on the warm side or lower its temperature by being on the cool side so for example once a corn snake's fed they like to be they like to head towards the warm side which is the case for all my corn snakes um, every time I feed them they will move over to that warm side so even if they're on the cool side when I fed them they will go and seek out the heat because it just helps them digest their food you can use a heat mat or a heat emitter um, or a bulb to heat the warm side of the tank I've always used heat mats because they work really well um, I'm just not keen on bulbs just because of the heat that they can get to I know you can get cages to go around them but even then and, you know especially with baby snakes and um, they can climb through the little gap and I've just seen all sorts of 
uh, horror stories online and photos and things of snakes, you know, basically getting cooked alive. So anyway, I rather stick to a heat mat with a thermostat. For the warm side, the temperature should be between 31 to 33 degrees Celsius. And for the cool side, it should be between 24 to 27 or 28 degrees Celsius. And you want an ambient temperature of like 26, I would say, degrees Celsius. And you can use three thermometers in their tanks, you know, one for the cool side, one for the middle to get like an ambient temperature and one for the warm side. I've got um, thermometers that have got probes on and that's on the warm side and the cool side and then I have like a little thermometer gauge in the middle of their tanks just to see as I say what the ambient temperature is and the corn snake humidity level and this counts for whether they're babies or adults it should be between 40 to 50 now with mine I would say I have it between 40 to 60 and I that involves me sort of up in the humidity if they're due like to shed their skin and stuff because they need, need that humid air to just help them shed and get everything off okay so substrate uh, there's lots of different types of substrate that you can use for baby corn snakes i would say to use shredded paper towel to begin with that's what all mine were on um Oh, there she is <laughs> that's what all mine were on they were on shredded paper towel for the first sort of two months and then after that I put them on aspen and you know that's what I did when I first got my snakes but I've since found lignocell is brilliant so I would say skip the aspen and um, get the lignocell uh, substrate because it's great for them to dig around in it's uh, quite absorbent as well um, and it's not dusty that was the problem that I found with aspen was it's quite dusty but with lignocell it's not so but as I say there's lots of different uh, varieties of substrate um, but yeah it's your choice at the end of the day so the depth of the substrate should be sort of for a baby should be two to three inches but with um, adults you might want it to be a bit more than that so maybe four inches or even five depending how uh, generous you are with the substrate but uh, yeah that's just a general guide hides so your baby corn snake will require hides just to be able to go somewhere feel secure and safe basically i mean having a lot of thick substrate to, for them to slither through and to hide in and all the rest of it that's great but they will need somewhere that they can just quickly zip into and hide if they feel like they're in danger so um, with mine i used the little coconut hides that you can get when they were babies and obviously now they're in bigger sort of cave hides but um but yeah uh, like those little half coconuts you can get they're great to use so i've got a fair few of those as well and i'm going to put up some other examples of little hides that you can use you can even make your own from i don't know like an old tub of butter you know once you finish the butter clean it all out and you know make like a little hole in the side or something and um you know make sure there's no sharp bits obviously but um yeah a simple and effective hide and um you know you don't have to spend that much money either so there we go okay, so another thing with hides is you might want to have a humidity box so that will be like a little box that they can slither into that's uh, got sort of damp sphagnum moss that you can get put some of that in and um just sort of put it on the sort of warmer side of their tank and uh, yeah so they'll slither in there when they're due to shed their skin and they'll you know just sit it out and then as I say when they're ready to shed their skin they'll come out and start shedding and hopefully it will be a shed that's all in one you don't want a baby snake to sort of partially shed its skin you want it in whole I mean it's that sort of case with all snakes you want it all in one but especially with baby snakes because you don't want to have to be trying to get stuck shed skin off of a baby um because it will just cause them stress and all the rest of it so yeah okay so how to handle a baby corn snake 
gently lift your snake out from its enclosure and remember to put your hand under the snake and not over because if you put it over they will see that as them being in danger and they will maybe try and strike at you to get you away and that does put a lot of people off when you know baby corn snakes try to strike you Cadassius was a nightmare for doing that when he was a baby um but you have to just kind of persist and you know like be brave basically and not be put off by this because i've heard of people getting corn snakes and then they never handle them so but when you get a new baby corn snake just sort of as i say get it out the tank and just from underneath and just carefully lift it out and just make sure you've got both hands ready and available to catch a baby corn snake because sometimes they can be really fast and you know slither around like crazy and you need to be able to catch them because they're okay at sort of gripping onto things but in the sclepion's case he was absolutely rubbish and always falling off things he's a lot better now but this little girl however she was all right with gripping onto things when she was a baby but um but as i say a sclepion mm -mm. <laughs> so just make sure you've always got two hands free so you want to handle a baby corn snake as i say because you want it to get used to you and used to your smell and you want to develop like that relationship between them so that whenever they see you or smell you or you go to get them out they understand that you're not a threat to them and you know that's that's something that I've developed with my snakes is I do get them out and nowadays I can have these out for a good half an hour to an hour if I want but with babies I would say just get them out for 10 minutes at a time when you first got them because they're new they're getting new to their surroundings they're getting sorry they're getting used to their surroundings they're getting used to you so just sort of handle them for 10 minutes and then put them back and then um, a few days later get them out again for another 10 minutes handling and then just put them back so slowly but surely you have to be patient it will take time but um, you'll get there <laughs> this little girl she's gone a bit still now which is good so another thing is with handling baby corn snakes or just adult corn snakes in general don't i would say as a golden rule don't handle them on the day that they're due to be fed um, my feeding day for my snakes is actually tomorrow it's been two weeks since i fed them always make sure as well that your hands are clean wash your hands make sure they don't smell of food or anything and especially don't get out mice to feed them and then get you know your snake out because your hands will smell of food to them if they if your hands smell of mice or rats the snake will smell that and just think that your hand is food so just make sure you always wash your hands and that they're clean and uh, then the snake won't get your hand confused with um, actual mice or rats <laughs> what do baby corn snakes eat they will eat small pinkies uh, to begin with for the first sort of two or three months and then after that that will be every five days i'd feed them every five days and move them up to large pinkies and feed them every six days on those and i did that for um, another two or three months then moved them up to fuzzies and i started feeding them weekly on fuzzies And then after that, I fed them um, on small mice. So after sort of about a year, they'll be on small mice, depending on their weight and how quickly they grow and whatnot. And with the small mice, I would feed them those, I'm just trying to think, maybe every 10 to 12 days. And then after that, I put them on medium mice. And these guys are still on medium mice every two weeks because i found that that's a good way to keep their weight fairly level and um you know you don't want an obese snake but you don't want a skinny snake either so yeah so these guys are on mediums now every two weeks some people will feed their adult snakes i would say they would feed a 
large mouse or jumbo mouse uh, once a month but I just like feeding these guys every two weeks on the mediums and they seem quite healthy and happy on that. So does a baby corn snake bite hurt? No it doesn't it literally feels like someone's just sort of poking you on your hand sort of thing that's just what it feels like they don't really have any teeth when they're that young obviously as they get older they do and um, their teeth grow and develop but when they're little babies and that um, when they hatch they have what's called an egg tooth but that will basically fall out so um whereas general teeth are concerned with babies there's next to nothing there so you won't feel you know you won't have any blood drawn as it were when they get bigger say six months old you know that's when their teeth really are you know coming about and if they do sort of um strike at you or anything like that or any sort of bite then you know you might have a little bit of blood but it's nothing to write home about if a snake does latch onto you don't ever just pull it straight off or especially don't pull its head back because you'll end up breaking the snake's teeth off and you'll end up with little tiny snake teeth in your skin unfortunately i made that mistake um when i uh, well it was a few years ago now but i made that mistake and i pulled cadassius's head from my hand because he mistakenly you know he was in blue and he couldn't see and i had a mouse to feed him and he thought my hand was the mouse and anyway so he was on me and i just got his head and i took his head off straight away from my hand and yeah and so he left little a couple of little teeth in my hand my hand was bleeding a little bit as well um it's a mistake on my part i'll never do it again it's just one of those things that happened you know no one's perfect you know with snake keeping there's always something that happens but um yeah so don't pull their head back because you'll break their teeth off and you'll end up with teeth in your skin um and a fair bit of blood so what i would say is if they do latch on just leave them latched on and that and if they're still not off after like half an hour then what i've done in the past is with a strayish bit my hand and uh, anyway so she was she was on my hand and i just went to the bathroom i ran the cold tap and just sort of very slowly and gently and then just put her head under the water so the water was on her head and she was like oh and she you know let go of my hand and that was that so if it ever does happen that a snake whether they're a baby or an adult just run some cold water and um just sort of run that cold water over their head and they should um, unlatch from your hand as it were are baby corn snakes aggressive um i would say no they're not i mean they can be a bit defensive because they're so small and they really feel like they need to defend themselves because they are so small so they will um especially in cadassus's case they will sort of strike a bit and just it's basically like a warning strike just to sort of get you away um but they're not they're just doing that in sort of defense but they're not aggressive like if they see right i'm gonna get you and you know go um <laughs> you know they they might be a little bit nervous and shy but they're not necessarily aggressive at all so and they're just they've got such sweet little faces it's like butter wouldn't melt <laughs> don't know what this girl's doing she's crazy <laughs> So corn snake hatchlings, people get confused between the word hatchling and baby corn snake, but hatchling is just basically um, a snake that's come out of the egg and it just hasn't had its first shed. That's it basically. So um, you can offer a hatchling food, but don't worry if they don't take any food off of you then just leave them until they have their first shed and then after that first shed that's generally when they'll start to feel hungry and they're more likely to feed so i mean this is more if you're going to breed corn snakes but um but yeah so normally wait till their first shed after they've hatched and just 
see if you can uh, get them to eat a pinky. That's just some information on baby corn snakes and how to look after them, how to uh, basically bring them up. I sound like they're my children, but my snakes are my children. <laughs> but yeah, so that's just some information to help um, beginners who do have a baby corn snake. And a lot of people do want snakes from babies so that they can develop like that little relationship and that sort of understanding because I found that with these guys. I've had them from babies and they've got used to me. They know I'm not a threat. They might still try and get away from me when <laughs> I try and get them out of the tank, but they don't do that striking or anything like that because they know my smell, they know me, they know sort of what I look like and things. So, and just to let you know, I will be um, at Doncaster Reptile Show um so yeah it's literally we're going to be there next sunday and uh, which will be a third of april the day before my 40th birthday so uh so yeah i hope to see some of you there and i'm just so looking forward to getting to a snake show again after all the covid stuff but uh yeah so i just thought i would mention that and uh yeah so i hope to see you all there hope you enjoyed seeing my little babies as babies um as you can see Cadassus was very small so was apollonia when i first got those two i think they were literally just a few weeks old i think they were three weeks old something like that when i got them um athene and asclepian i think they were like a couple of months old when i got them um but Athene's always been the bigger and the older of all of them. But uh, yeah, she's a good girl. She's uh, quite demure. <laughs> but yeah, she's grown to be a gorgeous snake and I can't wait till she sheds her skin and she's all bright and shiny and new again. So if you did enjoy that video, then please like and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, please hit that bell notification and click all so you get notifications of all my latest videos. And if you've got any comments or questions or anything like that, then just pop them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. But for now, from myself and the squiggly Athene, it is goodbye. And uh, we'll see you in my next video. Thanks very much for watching.